Chicago Sky get a much-needed victory over the Indiana Fever, a victory that also pushes them to the eighth and final playoff spot in the WNBA playoff race. They are in a tie in that eighth seed with the Los Angeles Sparks, but we do own the tiebreaker. We're going to talk about that, the Chicago Sky's playoff hopes, Elena Smith being a most improved player candidate, and we're going to go around the WNBA for news. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. Welcome to Chicago Sky Central, and here's your host, Hayes. What's going on, Sky fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Sky Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Sky related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but you guys can follow the channel at Chicago Sky Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. And the Chicago Sky get a huge victory, a victory that's that's hugely meaningful for the playoff race. But in this game, like, let's just be clear here. Elizabeth Williams is her, especially defensively. Yeah, Elizabeth Williams only scoring two points offensively in this game, but Elizabeth Williams was hugely important for containing uh, just everybody in this game. Like, the defense that she brought for this game was hugely important. And Leah Boston, she got a, a welcome to the WNBA moment who she did have six points. She goes two or five from the field, but Elizabeth Williams just gave her the business defensively and on the boards as well. Elizabeth Williams getting five rebounds in this game, all defensive rebounds, three assists, two steals, two blocks. She has a plus minus of plus 27 while also only scoring two points and going one of four, one of four from the field. But the, the in this game, Kalia Copper leading this guy in scoring, leading all scores in this game, 25 points she scored, nine of 13 from the field, four rebounds, one assist, Two steals in this game. Marina Mabry, 17 points. Uh, uh, Courtney Williams also with 17 points in this game. Uh, Marina Mabry having a difficult night from the three-point range, going one of five from three-pointers. She still is able to score 17 points, get six assists in this game, two blocks as well. And Marina Mabry, just, she played solidly in this game. But overall, this was a game that the Sky came in and performed, and it seemed like they understood the sense of urgency needed and what this game really meant, right? As far as in that playoff race, if this team really wants to make the, the playoff race, they played well, and this is the type of, of intensity they're going to need to maintain in the final two games of the season, right? 49.4% from the field overall, 43.8% from three-point range as a team, and they beat the Indiana Fever 96-69, to and this is a game a team that the Sky needed to beat, right? We talked about how the Sky just needed to take uh, advantage, and they need to win the matchups against the, the teams that are, that are lower than the Indiana Fever being one of those teams that that are already eliminated from playoff contention, the Sky needed to come in and take care of this. Now, they got a difficult schedule ahead of them. It's not going to all be easy, and we'll talk about that here in a minute in their in their final games, two games left in this season. But overall, the Sky came in, and they, they just played intense, right? And they made their mark defensively first, and that's how this team needs to make their mark. Defensively is when the Sky have always been their best. This season, right, when the Sky have looked like the best version of themselves is when they lock in defensively, and we get that. Courtney Williams saying this, our defense really set the tone. Uh, it was I was telling Elizabeth Williams in the locker room that her fronting Aaliyah Boston, us being able to, to backside, they threw it over the top a couple of times, and we got deflections. We made them second-guess that pass, and when you make a team second-guess going to somebody who's going to be the rookie of the year, somebody who is their new franchise player, that is the defensive mindset that you need to come in with. Courtney Williams also sharing this. It's do or die for us. Every game counts for us at this point. Every game. We have to step up and rise to the occasion. If we don't, we leave it on other people in other people's hands, and that's not what we want to do. In that regards, yeah, they own the tiebreaker over the Los Angeles Sparks, but not let's not act like the Sky have a super huge buffer here. They don't, right? The Sky have two games left. The Sparks have two games left. They have to try to win these next two games, both games against playoff teams. They, they Their last two games of the season come against teams that are in the Minnesota Leaks and Connecticut Sun that are going to be in the playoffs. The Connecticut Sun being the third overall seed and the Minnesota Lynx being the fifth seed. The Sky cannot take their foot off the pedal right now. And when you look at the Los Angeles Sparks um, and 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 the, the players that they have left to face in this run to the, I mean the, the, the players, the teams that they have left to face in their run to the playoffs, it's a it's they they face the Liberty and the Seattle Storm, right? They also face two teams that you do not want to take lightly. So it, it, it's going to be interesting. The Sky, in in a way, own their own destiny, but still they have to come in and they have to look at these last two games, and you cannot at all take your foot off the pedal. You just can't. And so 
We'll see what happens. I, I have confidence if the Sky can, com- can continue to play like how they played last night against the Indiana Fever, I have confidence in this team. We know what this team is capable of when they perform, especially defensively, and they get solid production from the bench. When you look at last night's game, right, Robin Parks chipping in 11 points off the bench going 4 of 9 uh, from the field. Uh, 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 Sewell as well coming, I'm sorry, uh, Rebecca Hibbert is as well in this one, seven points from her, right? And then you have Dana Evans with five points, Sika Kone with six points. The, uh, they went deep into the bench in this game as well. We had six players come off the bench and check into this game. The only players that didn't check into this game were the two that were injured. That is how the Chicago Sky need to continue to perform. They need to use their depth, right? But they have to play solidly in that. And and we'll see what they can do. I feel confident, in the, like I said, in the Sky's chances, right? But it's not going to be easy for them. The teams that they face aren't going to just roll over. Maybe you have the Connecticut Sun who, you know, maybe by then are, are more focused on the playoffs or whatever else it is. But the, the Sky, don't you don't want to leave that in people's hands. You have to come out and you have to perform. Sp- specifically, hang your hat on what you could do defensively. Yeah, the offense isn't just one that's just going to come easy to this team. But we know we have dogs offensively. We have uh, Kalia Copper who's just stepped up amazingly in this role now as the de facto, the, the absolute number one on this team. You have Marina Mabry, Courtney Williams who step in, and uh, Elena Smith, Elizabeth Williams. Like That whole starting lineup has the potential to just do things on both sides of the ball, be a solid two-way team and how you use them. It's up to the coach, but the Sky have to perform. Winning three out of four quarters in this game la- uh, last night, and in the fourth quarter, they tied it, right? So they didn't lose a single quarter. Not to say that the Sky are going to be able to do that against every single team coming up, right? The, well, the, the two teams they have left on their schedule, but they're going to have to try to perform in a way on both sides of the ball. Be that two-way team. Be that team that that it's not – you can't let, let teams come in and it be easy for them defensively at all. The Sky are going to have to perform that way if they're going to, going to want to get into the playoffs, and we'll see what they can do. But throughout this season, there's been a player that has definitely been shining and a, and a player that has been on the radar for most impo- improved uh, player of the year this year, and that's Elena Smith. When you look at her her contributions this season, 9.3 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, 1.9 assists, 1.4 steals per game in this, and 1.5 and blocks per game on top of all of that while shooting 49% overall from the field, 29% from three-point range, taking two and a half uh, three-pointers per game. But, like, Elena Smith has more so than anything else showed that she deserves to belong here in the WNBA. And it, and it was a question, right? When you look at her, her, her career, she's only started one game in her WNBA career before coming to the Chicago Sky. She started 22 out of 36 games for the Chicago Sky this year. Elena Smith has absolutely stepped up and does, has deserved to be in that conversation of most improved players of the year. When you look at it, it's really down to a three-woman race. It's her. It's Jordan Canada with the L.A. Sparks, who, again, is a, just happens to be on the team that we're kind of fighting for position with over that last playoff spot. But Canada as well, playing really great over the course of the season. You cannot take very much away from Jordan Canada and how she's performed this season for the Los Angeles Sparks, but she's definitely deserved to be mentioned in that in that talk of most improved player. 13.5 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 6 uh, assists, 2.5 steals per game. Jordan Canada has, has given, a, given the Los Angeles Sparks so far um, in her sixth season in the WNBA, starting 24 out of 36 games for the Sparks. Um, this the second most start she's had in her career. It's probably going to project that way with two games left. She's probably going to start those last two games, but she's definitely deserved to be in that conversation as well. And you cannot uh, overlook at all Satu from the Dallas Wings. She's just played so great, having a 40-point performance at some point this season. I do think she's kind of the third on, on in that in that ranking as far as you know talking about most improved players of the year, but she's definitely deserved herself to be mentioned. Uh, in that list. And Elena Smith is going to have, you know, we'll see if she can garner the votes. We'll see if she can garner, you know, the attention. A lot of times with stuff like that, it's also about storylines. And when you look at the storyline for Elena Smith, a player who signed at the minimum, right, who's who's definitely going to get a raise this upcoming offseason, but that there were some questions around if she even belonged in the WNBA to come in to be such an important part in in Chicago Sky winning. Yes, the team hasn't won at the level that many people would have hope the Chicago Sky to win at, at, at the season. I know that we came in with doubts and things like that, but overall, Elena Smith has more than made a case for herself with her play, right? And the fact that what she also does defensively, why it doesn't always show up hugely on the stat sheet, what she's done defensively has just been amazing. Then when you look at like 
in a in a weird stat, right, which combines steals and blocks, she ranks fifth in the WNBA as a whole as far as getting that uh, that uh, steals and blocks and how they add towards wins. Elena Smith has absolutely impacted winning for the Chicago Sky, and I and I'm glad that she's done it. I'm glad that you know. Shout out to James Wade who really found Elena Smith and brought her in with not as many people did, and you know he talked about really making that call for her, seeing her play overseas, things like that. She comes into the Chicago Sky organization. She starts because of Isabel Harrison going down with injury, and she steps up and has performed valiantly in that role and really given the Chicago Sky a much-needed pick-me-up in times and being being an important part to it for uh, wins for the Chicago Sky. So, you know, you, I don't want to overlook what, she, what Elena Smith has meant, what she's brought, and uh, just the importance that she's really had on this team. She's had a huge importance, and so I don't want to overlook it. I want to take my time and use my platform. Shout-out to Elena Smith and all three women who are, you know, in my opinion, in many people's opinion, at the head of that most improved uh, player of the year list. But with that said, we're done We're done with Chicago Sky uh, kind of news there. We know we got the final two games against the uh, Minnesota Lynx, which happens Friday, so be on the lookout for a post-game show for that. And then we also face uh, the Connecticut Sun on Sunday. And so by the beginning of next week, we will know what's going on with the Chicago Sky if they'll have a postseason appearance in Hey, listen, we'll see how they perform in the postseason after that. If they do get in, they'll be facing the Las Vegas Aces, which, man, uh, that that's the team that's playing on a different level. But, you know, I would like to see this team, especially considering they don't own their own first round pick outright. I would love to see this team get the chance and the opportunity to really um, to play in the playoffs and just see how this team can perform in that playoffs and to measure themselves against one of the best teams in the WNBA. Not not one of the best team in the WNBA. But with that said, let's go around the W for news. And I want to talk about Natasha Cloud and the situation that she ran into. So following a win against the uh, the uh, well, the Mystics winning, uh, she was accosted by, by a fan. And so by accosted, she was actually a fan waited outside for her to come out and, you know, ask for pictures. She then talked about how, you know, the, the fan said, I've been waiting two hours for you. And then inappropriately and aggressively touched her and, you know, spun her around and tried to take a picture and things like that. And it just puts the highlight on the fact that, more protection and security was one of the things that were voted on in that poll we talked about about two or three episodes ago that WNBA players need more security and safety. And so that really puts the the it, it, it puts the icing on top of the cake with that. Right. And so, you know, while I understand being a fan and wanting to get pictures with your with your favorite player, um, WNBA players really shouldn't have to face that type of aggression and things like that without having security around them. So hopefully the WNBA, you know, does something to shore that up. I wanted to mention and talk about it because it was such an such a thing. So she did, you know, call it out to the WNBA and, and with fans and hopefully, you know, they take security a little bit more serious and try to, you know, protect these players. But to get into the game of it, right? Brianna Stewart has broken the NBA, the WNBA's single season scoring record, um, scoring 40 points. Uh, she has now scored 885 points on the year, 25 more than when Diana Taurasi set that record in 2006, right? We are 17 years removed from that record being set, and it just got broken. You're going to see more records like this being broke because of the WNBA increasing the number of games played, 40 games being pl- played this year. That record was one of the ones that was destined to be broke. So you're going to definitely see more records like that being broke, but you still want to acknowledge it. Shout out to Brianna Stewart for owning another piece now of WNBA history. While Diana Taurasi is the all-time leading scorer in the WNBA, Brianna Stewart now becomes the player that has the sequel season scoring record. We'll see how long it stands because, like I said, with the number of games going up and more, more games being played, records like this, they're not in the place. In the, like the NBA has been 82 games for forever, right? With the WNBA, like, We'll see how long they stay at 40 games, but you're going to see more records, all-time steals, the blocks, rebounds, stuff like that is going to be broken when you're playing many, so many more games than what have been played in the WNBA before. But, you know, so that's what I that, that's kind of it is going around, w, around the WNBA. I do want to talk about this last thing, the MVP, right? We talked about the most improved player. Let's talk about the MVP. It's really come down to the three-player race for Asia Wilson, Brianna Stewart, and Alyssa Thomas. Uh, being kind of the, the final three contenders in that MVP voting. And really it comes down to how you weigh it, right? Uh, will Asia Wilson maybe not get as much of the vote because of her being on the, the a super team in the WNBA? But you can also say that about Brianna Stewart. I do think that because the, the Liberty come on a little bit more late that you you, it, you may not get that stigma. But then you, uh, Alyssa Thomas and all of this, right? I do not want to miss the fact that while we've get, we're getting – some of the, the the best teams we've ever seen in WNBA history, right? 
Alyssa Thomas and what her and the Connecticut Sun have been able to do, right? Keep in mind, staying up there for, for the longest part of the season, they were the number two overall seed above the New York Liberty um, before it. And so Alyssa Thomas has come in and been such an important part, the probably main important part to that. And when you look at her averages, 15 points per game, leading the team in rebounds and assists and steals as well. She's just not leading the team in, in scoring. That's done by Dewana Bonner. But like, Alyssa Thomas deserves to be on this list with these with these other two ladies. We know what Stewie's brought. We know what uh, what Asia Wilson has brought and continues to bring. And we talked about a couple of episodes ago just how important it is to have Asia Wilson as one of the faces of your league, right? I think she's just so important in that. She has the personality, the skill set, uh, everything to be that. But Alyssa Thomas is just such an amazing player. And I hope that she does garner some of those MVP votes and attention. I do not want to let the season, the season the other two have had, which I do think have been better seasons, to overlook what Alyssa Thomas and the Connecticut Sun have been able to achieve this season. But you guys can let me know down below. If the MVP voting, you had a vote on it, who right now are you voting for your MVP? Are you voting for uh, Elena Smith to be the most improved player of the year in the WNBA? Let me know all that down below. But that's my time for today. Make sure you guys are following the show at Chicago Sky Pod on every social media platform you happen to be on. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Sky Central at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773 773- 270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Sky related and WNBA related. And I'll see you guys the next time we go to Sky Town. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media. Media.